lecture session and uh, the PDF is sent today. So please uh, check that because all the numericals that we had done yesterday is uh, given in that. So don't look at books immediately. Just do all the numericals in translational motion. Today we are going to do a rotational motion. After today, or maybe at the end of this week, uh, your module one will be completed, or at least this numericals, basic numericals will be completed. So then you can check any book, you can do any numerical. So what I'll do today is I will start with the rotational system and uh, whatever translational or linear system I had seen yesterday in the same line, the rotational system will go. So let me launch uh, this thing and uh, I will start with the rotational system example. So today's topic is rotational mechanical system that we are going to see. Just give me one minute. I will launch it. So I'm going to launch a PDF and that PDF you can find out uh, through the window. I think the PDF is visible. So whatever we had done in case of linear system, there were three components. One was mass, another was V, that was friction. <clears throat> and the last one was uh, mass, friction, and the last one was the uh, spring. Okay, so the same kind of system exactly. So if you try to find out the analogy, then only it is possible to understand the thing easily. Okay, because not every system is different. All the systems are similar. Some of you just let me know whether this uh, writing of mine is uh, clearly visible to you or not. Yes, sir. Okay, so you can see this handwriting, it is a little faint, but don't worry. Uh, when I send you this PDF, this PDF only I'm going to send you. So when I send you this PDF, you'll be able to prepare it good or any book, Ogata, or maybe our Gopal also, you will find it. So at present, don't see any book. That is the request to you. Listen to what I'm doing. Read my notes first. Understand the concepts, all the numericals. So whatever numerical we are solving it, I'm having everything in uh, written form, so I'll be uploading it today itself. So all the uh, whatever is uploaded in uh, uh, Google Classroom so far, I have only uploaded the, I think up to fourth, I had uploaded the PDA, fourth lecture, fifth, sixth, uh, seventh, eighth. So today is eighth lecture. All the lectures, I will upload the PDF. Okay, so give me just time uh, by this weekend or maybe in another one or two days. So every lecture, so those PDF you read first and then you go for uh, any other books. Okay. okay, so whatever we did yesterday, it was a, a system where we are giving torque as the input. So sorry, uh, force as the input. So force was the input there. There were three elements. One was mass, one was uh, uh, damper or friction, and the last one was spring. Okay. Now, today what we are going to do is, we are going to see exactly the same thing. So you have to find the similarity, that is your job. We are going to do a rotational system. So the same system, whichever I had shown yesterday, you rotate it. So best example is uh, DC motor. Okay, so DC motor, whenever I'm talking about motor, it is generating a force, it is generating a, not force, but force is rotational. So whenever the force is rotational, we call it torque. Force is given in Newton. Okay, and torque is given in Newton meter. So if we just multiply the force, so if there is a, a, a round kind of a, a round kind of a pulley, okay, so you can see that on every motor, uh, the, there is a shaft. Okay, so here is the motor, and inside that there is winding and all this thing, there is a shaft coming, and on that shaft, there is a, a load. So job of the motor is to rotate that load. 
so motor is rotating a load it is rotating a, a some weight and all those things uh, that is the rotational system okay so whenever i'm talking about the force so force is coming and whatever is the pulley on which the load is connected the pulley is having a diameter so whatever force the mechanical force the motor is generating that is given by f and diameter of that uh, sorry uh, r that is the uh, yes uh, diameter is the whole thing uh, half of it okay so half of dia what do we call it the radius okay so radius is uh, multiplied with the force f into r that giving us the torque so unit of torque is newton meter so force generated is for, uh, newton and torque is meter so multiply force with torque and we are getting newton meter so whatever is the input quantity for mechanical system is force whatever is the input quantity for rotational system it is torque whatever is the force that was equal to m into a so in case of a uh, linear system uh, a mechanical system we are talking about so force was equal to mass into acceleration in the rotational system uh, so analogy you have to remember similarity you have to remember so for rotational system is this a force it is coming torque so everything is multiplied with the dimension of uh, radius so everything is having now in a rotational kind of a thing so force was equal to mass into acceleration but here torque is equal to j into alpha so j is nothing but inertia so whatever is the mass in case of linear translational system so linear linear force system is called as translational system uh so car is uh, a mixture of both so car tire rotates and it have a linear motion so it's an angular motion as well as linear motion both so uh, whatever torque we are generating that is equal to inertia multiplied by alpha what is alpha uh, it was m into a a was d2 xt d2 2 that is the second derivative of displacement was equal to acceleration in this case for rotational system second derivative of angular displacement so angular displacement is given by theta d theta dt is called as omega that is the angular velocity and d2 theta 2 dt2 is called as angular acceleration so that is given by alpha so now i will read uh, so this is my document uh, from page number 16 it is it is my hand written it is taken from the book of gopal only so don't worry so rotational motion is a body or uh, rotational motion of a body is defined as a motion about the fixed axis so there is a axis whenever you are talking about a motor with the center axis point it rotates around that axis statement of newton's law it says that algebraic sum of a moment of torque okay so in case of uh, f is equal to ma it says about uh, total force in case of uh, circular motion it talks about algebraic sum of torque so there is a difference uh, for uh, translational system it is amount of force for rotational system it is algebraic sum of moment of torque so torque about uh, axis fixed axis is equal to the product of the inertia that is j and the angular acceleration so for linear system it was mass into linear acceleration that is uh, mass is m and d2xt dt2 for uh, angular system it is inertia j multiplied by d2 theta t dt2 so theta is nothing but the angular displacement t is the torque omega is the angular velocity what is going to be angular velocity it is the first derivative of displacement so d theta dt and theta is given by theta t like x is given by xt x is the displacement okay so whatever is x linear displacement in case of linear translational system or mechanical system for rotational it is theta t how much angle this thing is rotating okay so omega is d theta t dt and uh, inertia alpha is d2 theta t dt2 and displacement is theta t input is torque and whatever is the mass in case of uh, translational system that is inertia in case of rotational system so it is given here j is equal to half m r square so this is the relationship between mass and radius okay so uh, in a uh, rotational system we are finding inertia what is inertia this is j half m okay m is nothing but the mass of the thing that is rotating and r square r is the radius of that pulley so here i am saying here i am showing a pulley like this and this is having a mass capital m and this is rotating with some kind of uh, velocity so that is given by d theta dt that is nothing but omega so this is a t t t means capital t is the torque and small t is the time function so small uh, t is the time function it is always there capital t is the torque generated so like it was ft 
whatever was the force uh, you are giving in case of translational motion you are giving torque here okay so whatever was ft in case of linear motion uh, in case of angular it is capital t t so force is equal to mass into acceleration it was there now here also torque is equal to inertia into uh, angular acceleration or is equal to jd omega t dt because we know that alpha t is nothing but acceleration is nothing but differentiation of velocity and uh, this velocity is nothing but again differentiation of angle angular displacement so what we are finding is tt is equal to j d2 theta t dt uh, or j d omega t dt or it is j alpha t what is j alpha t alpha t is nothing but d2 theta t dt2 so same thing as xt if you are taking xt as a displacement dxt dt is the velocity and d2 xt dt2 is the acceleration same thing here so whatever is the torque given that is inertia multiplied by the angular uh, acceleration that is that whatever is the, is the unit of torque and whatever is the unit of j and all those things we will see in the next uh, slide so this is how the uh, uh, motor is connected with the so this is the weight which is being rotated so this is the load and there is the inertia this is rotating with a angular displacement of theta t and this is tt so it's very simple it is all the uh, similar kind with the translational motion so don't get confused so torque inertia system previously used to call it as force and mass system in case of translational we used to call it force mass system in case of angular it is called as torque inertia system and theta t is the angular displacement omega t angular velocity which is nothing but d theta t dt alpha t is nothing but angular acceleration which is d2 theta t dt2 i think this page is understandable so here it is translational and rotational uh, whatever is the force in case of uh, translational system this is torque in case of rotational system so here it is force current if i circuit okay so we had done two analogies for if v it will be voltage for uh, force current it is current so current is the input in case of electrical circuit fi analogy so another column we can add here that is fv analogy so i will write that and i'll post it in the group so here i have written three columns actually there may come four columns so fourth column i will keep on telling you so whatever is force in case of translational motion torque in case of rotational motion for fv analogy it is voltage for fi analogy input is current translational motion mass is m given by kg meter square so force is given by newton meter inertia is j what is the unit of j we will see shortly so for rotational it is j and for if v analogy what is the input uh, input is uh, voltage and here in case of mass we are finding inductance l okay so if v analogy it is l if i analogy it is capital c for translational system it is spring k in uh, newton meter per radian in case of rotational system also it is spring k so this is actual newton so this uh, units this units are actually given for the rotational system okay so rotational system torque is newton meter inertia is kg meter square uh, remember this units spring constant k is newton meter per radian so whenever radian things are coming means you have to understand this is talking about rotational system so this is k and in case of uh, rotational system it is spring constant k so how spring is occurring in case of rotational that is something i'll tell you uh, that is written in the book but you will not understand how the spring is coming in the rotational system uh, so unit is newton meter per radian in case of fv analogy in case of fv analogy what are, what i find is spring is nothing but spring k so spring k is nothing but 1 by c okay so in case of fv analogy it is 1 by c here in case of fi analogy it is 1 by l okay likewise and damper b damper we have seen this is the friction so in case of rotational also it is rotational friction damper b so whenever a, a chakka is rotating with that something is just touched okay so something is just touched so there is a surface okay like that which is touching this rotation so there is a rotational surface which is rotating and some other surface is just touching it so between this rotation and this surface there is occurred a friction so i will show you so below is the diagram you can see there we can uh, see all these things what is the generation of spring action what is the generation of damper action we can find through this diagram so this is b in case of translational uh, this is b in case of rotational also newton meter per radian per second so this is the unit of damper b in case of uh, if v analogy it was resistance okay and in case of uh, if i analogy it is one upon resistance and uh, linear displacement linear displacement is x here it is angular displacement theta 
in case of fv analogy force voltage analogy output was uh, nothing but charge qt and in case of fi analogy the output is flux that is phi and the last thing here it is uh, dx dt that is the rate of change of uh, velocity so rate of change of displacement that is velocity here it is angular velocity d theta dt okay so the same thing is there but only first column it is linear second column it is moving in this case if v analogy you should come in between it is dit dt sorry dqt dt dqt dt is nothing but current so rate of change of uh, charge dqt dt was equal to current and in case of uh, if i analogy uh, which we did in the lecture number 4 if i fp and all those things i think lecture number 5 uh, we had done it so this was d phi t dt so this is a very important table but only thing is the third column is missing which is for fb analogy so i'll put all these four things into one table first is translational mechanical second thing is uh, rotational mechanical third thing is fb analogy electrical and fourth thing is fi analogy which is called as uh, uh, electrical again okay so all those four things i'll put in one uh, slide and i'll display it to you so now this is so as we had done the for the mbk system now you are going to do the same thing for jbk system so m is substituted with j m is mass in case of uh, linear translational system and j is uh, the inertia in case of rotational system so how is it happening just see that this is a disk so this is a uh, this is connected so this is a rotational system which i have shown here and this is a surface so the, the disk is rotating and this is what is called as a rod metallic rod so you have to understand that it is like a fan so i think i have shown a fan so it is fixed with the ceiling so that fixed is shown by this okay and from there one rod is coming down and uh, one wheel is rotating below so like that now whenever something is rotating below whatever is a rod this rod is there it actually experiences a torsional kind of a motion what is torsion kapde jab rings karte ho tum log so you give a torque to it one hand in one direction the other hand in the other direction okay so if there is a rod like this whenever something is rotating in this case that means this uh, rod is also experiencing a torsion kind of a thing so you can see how the torsion looks like either you can see in the google or you can see in the youtube video how does the torsion look like so it is in the s shape if you say this is the rod uh, length it is in the s shape so just remember this how we rinse the cloth we rinse it like this okay and that is actually a torque we are applying on that a rod or on that uh, kapda whatever we are rinsing okay so whenever there is a rotation uh, at the end of uh, one rod okay so there is a torsion kind of so s shape so it starts at one end and goes to the other end so there is a, a torque kind of uh, spring action which is experienced by this k which is experienced by this metallic uh, rod okay so that is actually generating k so spring constant means Uh, how well this rod is accommodating uh, this torsional kind of pressure okay that is actually depending on the value of k and uh, on this uh, uh, disc actually we are connecting a surface so there is a fan which is rotating like this okay and on that we are connecting a surface so that surface is given by b it is also a fixed surface okay and there is whenever this is rotation so this uh, disc is rotating with angular displacement of theta t and this disk is rotating with a torque of capital t of t why there is a t because all these things are variable so at every time angular displacement is changing at every time the torque is changing so that's why they are function of time okay this b is not a function of time so see that this b is nothing but a friction so whenever it is rotating i am keeping another surface so intentionally i am touching the b yesterday we have seen with the mass if you are connecting the wheel there is no friction so not necessary that b always will be there not necessary if we are keeping a surface which is touching the rotation this side so rotate to them it is touching some surface this side and there is produce the b not necessary every time b will be there okay like in uh, mass if there is a wheel there is no friction the same thing we have kept a b here because we want to show you a system with uh, rotational spring action rotational friction and inertia we want to uh, compile all these three things with the t capital t of t yeah that's why we have kept this b now if the b is not there and fan is rotating okay so fan is rotating and we have not kept a surface do you think whenever the fan is rotating uh, there is any friction uh, on the fan can anybody just tell me this is friction between what who is creating opposition to the rotation of fan can anybody just answer this 
Uh, who is that? Amruta. Amruta Hiramat, right? Yes. So you have said it very correctly. Air is creating a friction. So even if this B is not there, always there is a B that you have to remember. Okay. Uh, whenever we are walking on the road, okay, if somebody is not coming and opposing us, but there is always an opposition to us. What is that? Air is giving the opposition. We are walking on the road. Our leg is uh, scratching on the uh, surface. That means there is a friction between our foot sole and on the road. So there is. We are always opposed. Either by air or by surface, it is there. So whenever a fan is rotating, always there is a uh, friction, and that friction is given by B. Okay, but here I have created another uh, friction between the surface and this. So whenever the tire is rotating, whenever the tire is rotating, we want the tire to rotate while we are driving the car. But we create a friction. What is that friction called? Anybody? We create a friction on the tire. We want the tire not to rotate at certain times. What is that friction called? Can anybody tell me? Whenever we are driving a car, we want the tire to rotate as fast as possible. But at certain time, we are causing the tire not to rotate. We are causing a friction on that tire. What is that process called? It is called as braking. Okay, so we are creating a friction on the tire. That we are creating a braking because whenever the car is going very fast, and we want we see that there is a lot of traffic jam in front, and car is going very fast. So we don't want to hit that. So what we want to do is we want to stop the car. So we create a friction. So there is disc brake, there is drum brake. The boys who drive the bike and girls also they know how we create. So we we just uh, hold the brake and uh, disc and drum. All these arrangements are there in the tire, and uh, we will see this in the electrical vehicle. So there is electric in the 6M uh, is very interesting. Electric vehicle, hybrid electric vehicle. Okay. So there we will see. All this disc brake, drum brake, and all these things. So we are creating a friction on the rotating thing. Okay, so that is there. So a lot about friction. Uh, here you are finding that this is the direction of TT. This is the direction of torque, and this is the direction of uh, inertia. So inertia is always trying to oppose whatever is the forward torque. This is the direction of friction. This is the direction of spring. So you can see that whatever torque you are giving, that is actually getting wasted, creating the inertia. Overcoming the spring, uh, overcoming the spring action, and overcoming the rotational friction. Okay, so same thing. Whatever voltage I am giving, that is doing three works in case of LCR circuit. First is whatever L is there, it is creating inductive voltage. So this is you can say this is the voltage VT input. So this is creating uh, voltage. So this is L DIT DT. Uh, this is R of IT. And this is one upon C integration of IT DT. Exactly the same thing is here. Whatever uh, torque I am giving, that is overcoming the J D2 theta D2. This is the inertia part. This is overcoming the friction, either air friction or created friction. That is B D theta DT. There is the friction part, and this is the spring action because some energy is going in creating the torsion. That is spring kind of action in the uh, rod which is connected with the. Rotating field, so you have to imagine a fan, or you have to imagine a motor which is driving a load. All those things are same thing. So I think this is understood. I can go forward. So whatever torque I am giving, that is getting wasted into these three parts. So addition of J D D two theta D T two plus B D theta D T plus K theta is equal to T T. So this is the modeling of this system. So initially I had given you M B K system. What was that? Force was given F F was equal to M D two X T D T two. Plus B dxt dt plus kxt. That was the model for MBK system. Then we took Laplace transform both the sides. We found output by input. That is Xs by Fs. That was equal to one by J square plus Bs plus k. Same thing here. Same thing here. If we are finding what is the modeling of this thing, second order system modeling. Again, I told you that bigger, very big system can be modeled into a smaller second order system. Though there might be a little bit of error, but uh, this is a almost compact kind of modeling. So, what is the? If I ask you, can you write down the force equation of this thing? So, what do you have to write? T T. That is the torque. Whatever was F T in case of mechanical translation, this is T T here. So, T T is equal to J D two theta D T two. So, here you can write theta T as well plus B D theta T D T plus K theta T. Take the Laplace in both the sides, so this will become T S. This will become J S square theta S plus B S theta S plus K theta S. So theta S you take one side. Now finally you find the uh, ratio of theta S by T S. What you will find one upon J S square plus B S 
plus k. That's all. So that is the transfer function of the rotational system. That is theta s output uh, output displacement divided by input torque T s. So theta s by T s equal to one upon j s square plus b s plus k. For uh, translational system, it was uh, x s by f s equal to one upon m s square plus b s plus k, where m was mass, b was friction, and k was uh, the spring constant. So in this case, it is j square plus b s plus k. So disk is mounted on a shaft which is fixed at one end, so top end. Moment of inertia of the disk about the axis is rotation is j. Age of the disk is riding on a surface viscous friction coefficient. So here b is the viscous friction coefficient between surface in in s in b. So even if b is not there, air is giving you the friction. You have to understand. So shaft inertia is negligible. Torsion spring constant is k. So where is the torsion spring constant? It is not is on the disk. It is on the shaft which is connected from the ceiling to the disk okay. so that shaft is also trying to rotate or shaft is fixed the shaft is not rotating shaft is fixed but it is experiencing that force rotational force which is going below and that is actually creating that torsion force so torsional spring constant is k when torque is applied to the disk the moment of equation about the shaft axis is tt is equal to d2 theta t dt2 plus b theta dt k theta so i told you all these things already now you are taking the uh, laplace transform in both the sides and you can find out so this is not the page don't worry about that they have given what is x1 t is theta t x2 t is dx1 t theta dot t this is omega t and this is called as state space representation don't worry now uh, we will be doing the state space representation later this is another numerical so i'm just going back this is not the rotational system this is a linear system as uh, something of this kind we had solved last day so this is my uh, very previous note written before some five six years so that's a many numerical i have put together so this is that mechanical system b k1 m1 k2 m2 i have found what is the uh, fv analogy of this and i have found what is the fi analogy so this is what you have to do i will give a mechanical system i'll ask you find out what is the fv analogy electrical circuit of that so you can find it here and you can find what is the fi analogy so this also i will explain to you in some other time so first is fi analogy this one circuit second is the fv analogy so all those things so these are little complex things uh, i don't know whether they will be asked in exams or not but we will be prepared this is another system okay we have done it previously so below is the free body diagram you can find this is f this is m1 this is k1 and all these things this is b1 and k2 so b1 and k2 is coming in between so this is now x1 m2 okay here k3 b2 so here we are considering that there is no friction because surface is not shown in the below that's why there is no friction so once you draw this free body diagram then you can go find what are the equations and from there you can find out what is the transfer function and then equivalent circuit so this is the fv analogy so from the previous circuit you can find what is fv analogy so this is another kind of circuit uh, what we have done yesterday something of this kind so this is the system given from there you can find what is the fv analogy so whatever is f here that is going to be v here like this okay so i am removing this document because we are mainly interested in uh, doing what is called as the rotational system okay so uh, i will open another diagram and uh, i'll let you know what are different types of uh, so let us see another uh, diagram there actually will be finding my writing only so let me launch it the same system whatever is explained is given there uh, so present now is the page visible so there is a handwritten page in the left side is it visible i think it is visible okay anybody please confirm if it is visible akshata thank amrutha thank you <clears throat> so the same thing i am telling you again so uh, it is not different so it is a motion so rotational motion what i am telling it is a motion about a fixed axis here the input is not force but input is uh, given by torque 
uh, about a fixed axis the rotational system of torque is applied to a rigid body or a system is equal to the sum of <coughs> torques consumed by the different so spring and damper is rotational system behaves as if they are uh, like linear system so proper only differences only difference is mass whatever is there in case of translational system here that is uh, inertia j that is the big difference nothing else okay so here you are finding this is the same thing so l uh, alpha is given by d2 theta t d2 whatever is mass it is inertia what is friction it is b spring is k and force is torque displacement x is angular displacement velocity v is dx dt d theta dt acceleration is d2 dx dt like this okay. and this is a table this table is already shown to you and uh, this is another table okay whichever is also shown to you now let us see uh, let us see another document uh, where we are going to solve a numerical but before that uh, let me is this page visible to you so this is a printed kind of a page okay. uh, i would ask you to take pen and paper and write down the units very fast so one numerical we will solve after this but before that just write down the units very fast is this page visible so first point is inertia so basic rotational mechanical system properties so how to convert a linear system into a, a rotational system so whatever is inertia inertia symbol is j what is the unit kg meter square not kg per meter square kg meter square so mass is m kg you have to multiply it with meter square what is meter where is the unit coming so whenever you are talking about radius okay radius square so whatever is the mass that mass is rotated with some kind of radius whenever there is a rotation it will be having a arc okay and that arc will be having a radius okay so that you have to multiply that uh mass uh, square of the radius so if i say a uh, mass is suppose 1 kg and radius is suppose 0.5 meter so 1 kg into 0.5 into 0.5 okay that is going to be the inertia so is this inertia unit understood kg meter square have you understood it what is inertia kg it is is it visible first thing anybody is it visible this page yes sir, yes, sir. okay ashwini thank you uh kiran thank you okay deepak thank you so kg meter square be very careful they go interviews mein yahi sab puchte hai if you see gate if you see brs interview research institutes interview big i'm telling you all very big institutes okay they are asking you units they asking you whether you know what is force first they will ask you what is force force is equal to mass into acceleration okay then what is pressure pressure is equal to force by area so uh, newton per meter square that is force newton into meter that is equal to torque okay then they will ask you what is inertia so kg into meter square what is angular displacement angular displacement is given in radian okay that is theta t angular velocity we call it omega radian per second so if you are having pen and paper i'll ask you just for your knowledge sake just write all these things down i'll be posting all these things materials to you okay so angular velocity omega so don't see at the symbols uh, we will be using different symbols omega is equal to radian per second angular acceleration alpha we talked about okay so linear acceleration is a that is d2 x2 d2 that is meter per second square angular acceleration is radian per second square okay so whatever is the displacement per second square that is actually <clears throat> acceleration so in case of linear it is meter per second square because displacement is given in x xt in case of angular it is theta t so theta t per second square uh, here it is radian per second square what is the input to the system input to the mechanical system force is given by force that is newton linear in case of angular system it is torque okay it is newton meter so again i am telling you this is a shaft where certain amount of force is created of newton and this is there is a pulley at the end of it on the pulley the load is connected so that pulley is having radius of uh, r okay so force multiplied by the radius of the pulley that is nothing but torque created at the surface of the pulley so it is newton into meter so meter kahan se aaya and meter is nothing but the radius of the rotation arc okay so that is newton meter very important spring constant k ye last thing bahut important hai uh, spring constant k so there newton meter per radian 
it is like that okay i'll ask you to find out what is the spring constant and what is the uh, viscous friction constant in case of linear system as well i have given it is in the notes so find out what is spring constant in rotation newton meter per radian and viscous friction coefficient newton meter per radian per second okay and what is the energy energy is nothing but joules and what is power power nothing but joules per second that is nothing but watts so this is a very important slide uh, please remember now before and after whatever is done it is already given so this uh, comparisons are already given to you all this theory and everything we have discussed just now uh, i'll go directly to the last thing which is called as a numerical so we will be solving a numerical i will give you one system and this also will be posted to you so i'll be giving you one system and i'll ask you uh, find out what is the transfer function so write down the question the question says that uh, find out the transfer function of the rotational system so i'll be giving you the function of a motor i'll be giving you the transfer function of a motor and you are supposed to find out the transfer function of that motor system so i think uh, this uh, thing is visible to you screen is visible to you there is a numeric is it's it the... very faint so i'll do it a little bigger so we are having another 10 minutes we will be doing this numerical so somewhat it is visible to you right clearly visible all of yes, you sir. okay now you have to understand this concepts so if possible draw this diagram on the pen and paper it will be in front of your eyes it will be easier this is exactly the best thing the best example we can start with okay so uh, in the book if you see uh, the numericals come in little bit haphazard manner so the way we are doing it we are just increasing the difficulty level step by step so first i have already shown you a numerical today for rotational system where we are giving the input as tt uh there were three uh entities in that system one was the j that is the inertia another was the brake uh, angular brake that was capital b friction another was the spring that is k so we have seen the transfer function or we have modeled it that is tt is equal to j d 2 theta 2 dt plus b d theta t dt plus k theta t that was the simplest model like mbk model okay and after that we are going to see some difficult kind of system so this is that difficult system and what the trans what the question is find what is the transfer function of this motor so as you have said this diagram is visible uh, so this is a three page document and we have to we are having 10 minutes in our hand so we'll finish it so first you have to understand what is this so this is two mass system if you understand okay so here is a mass here is another mass and this is connected with a spring so this rod is actually like acting like a spring so this is motor and this is in inducing or this is generating a torque of tm m stands for motor l stands for load so sometimes i have written capital l sometimes i have written small l all are load okay you consider small l only uh, so l stands for load theta tan stands for uh, position of the load angular position of the road a uh, load Uh, load means some weight some weight which is being driven by the motor theta m is angular position of the motor at any time so motor shaft is rotating whenever it is rotating it rotating 360 degree and all but at any instant of time from a starting position how much is the rotation of that uh, shaft that is given by theta m and that shaft is actually connected to the load and load is having some weight so theta m rotation and theta l rotation they are not same okay so there is some kind of torsion there is some kind of torsion so this theta will will be lagging this theta m theta m will be uh, rotating fast and theta l will be rotating uh, late you will say that sir ek hi to shaft hai wo to same ghumega looking from our side it will look same but uh, we will find if you see very uh, into the depth theoretically so theta m will be going ahead and after that theta l is there because theta m is the cause and theta l is the uh, output and jl is nothing but the inertia half m uh, r square we have seen that half m so mass of load is generally uh, it may be big it may be small depends on that so motor is having mass m m uh, load is having mass m l l stands for load so half m l into r square okay that is nothing but the uh, radi uh, jl that is the inertia kg meter square and motor is also having its inertia given by jm 
whenever the motor is there inside that there is lot of bearing and all other things so motor is having some friction loss air loss that is given by bm so bm is nothing but the uh, friction so it is given here motor viscous friction coefficient angular damper constant is given by p so i am just telling you what all components are so tm is the motor force linear uh, not linear angular force theta m is the motor shaft displacement in the angular direction bm is the motor viscous friction coefficient jm jm is nothing but the motor uh, inertia uh, this is all in the motor side then there is a torsion so this is the mass m1 this is the mass m2 and they are connected with a spring k spring constant so that spring here is nothing but a k which is nothing but a spring uh, spring kind of thing which is a rod here it is load jl so uh, how many parameters are there jl theta l k tm theta m bm jm you can say sir there is a bl here it is there you can consider you cannot consider it's up to you as it is not here it is understood that load is not having or load is having very small uh, friction loss so we are not considering that okay so is has is all the parameter understood there is a question and all the parameters are written in the first page so gm is the motor inertia theta m is the motor angular displacement xmt uh, here i have written the analogy in the uh, translational thing so it is mm motor inertia mass it is mass uh, theta m is same as xm the tm is nothing but fm f is nothing but the force then uh, bm bm is nothing but the b which is the damper dashpot constant k is same as k spring constant jl is ml okay so there is a load at the starting motor this is the cause from where the force is generated and this is the load that is the uh, ml so that is the output load okay, ml theta l is nothing but uh, movement so there are two things x1 and x2 as we had seen in yesterday's numerical x1 and x2 so motor is rotated so theta m and theta l okay so there are two things so there are two nodes omega l is load velocity uh, load angular velocity and omega m is motor angular velocity and there are a function of theta m and uh, theta l likewise okay so this is the first page second page we are going to draw the free body diagram so again the same thing there is the motor so motor i am showing by this and there is no friction between the ground so there is no friction so it is not connected to ground so what all components are here so what is the uh, previously used to call it x1 so in case of x1 it is now theta m okay so there is a node uh, input connected is tm it is given here and there are two components where the force is being dissipated so what is the first component it is jm so inertia this is the second order component multiplied by alpha and this is the friction okay and there is a k now this k is common between theta m and theta l so this k is nothing but connected between input and output so how many components are there 1 2 3 4 is it understandable this is the first thing so whatever theta m is there so yesterday in numerical we have found out that x1 and x2 So x1 is connected with tm, jm, and bm, and x2, that is the theta l, is connected with only jl and theta l. So this is jl and this is theta l. So whenever you are writing the node equation at theta m, it will be k into theta m minus theta l, and whenever you are writing node equation at the load side, it will be k into theta l minus theta m. This is the only thing you have to understand. So now what you are going to do is, so this is a free body diagram. This is the motor side. This is the load side. You have to understand. It's a very simple numerical. There is nothing difficult. So TM. So this is the yesterday we had done uh, the first loop where no input was given. That we write first, and with the input we had written second. But in this case, uh, as motor is getting some kind of input, so TM. TM is nothing but F input. So torque is the input equivalent to force is equal to JM. So we are writing this equation: JM into d two theta m to d d two plus BM into d theta m by d. So this. jm and bm they are only connected to the input side they are not common between input and output but what is common between input and output is the shaft because shaft is connecting the theta m with theta l that's why the shaft k or spring action is common between theta m so in the both sides of k so spring both sides is the input side theta m and output side theta l so there is a difference between displacement okay so that is actually occurring because of the spring action of the Uh, rod so that's why it is k of theta m minus theta l so as you are writing the force equation at m side motor side it will be k theta m minus theta l so this is tm this is the input this is the second order uh, action jm due to theta m due to two so theta is nothing but x jm is nothing but m and t is nothing but f in case of translational system 
Here B is B friction, so there is air friction, there is bearing friction, and B theta m dt. That's all. And this K is common between theta m and theta l. That's why K theta m theta l. Now take Laplace transform both the sides. You have to mention this with initial condition zero. Now this will become J m s square. This will become B m s. This will become K theta m mm, s K theta l s. Now here you just uh, do all the things. So leave it like that. So this is equation of uh, one. So here it is T m. T m is the input quantity. And what is the final output? Final output is uh, we are saying as theta m. Okay. So theta m is the final output, like this. So we are going to find out the transfer function between theta m and uh, we are going to find out transfer function between theta m and T l. Okay. So this is going to be our transfer function. So equation of the force and motion at the load side. So at load side, what we are finding is so at load side there is only uh, dissipation. There is no input because input is there only at the motor side. So this is zero. K into theta l minus theta m because spring is there. Spring is common at the input side and output side. So here there will be only two components. One is K into theta l minus theta, and other will be J l d2 theta l t d2. So this equation. So J l d2 theta l t d2, and here this side is zero. So we are finding J l square theta l s plus K theta. Then you are finding what is theta l. What is theta l in terms of theta m? So it is K by J l square plus K into theta m s. That's all. Now if you want to find, if I ask you to find transfer function between theta l and T s. Here you have to write opposite. Here you have to write theta m is equal to J l square by k uh, plus k divided by k. So either you can find out theta l in terms of theta m because you will be substituting in the next equation or in the previous equation you will be substituting theta l by theta m, and then you will find the transfer function between theta m and T m. But you can find transfer function between theta l and T m as well because theta m and theta l both are being caused by um, the same force, which is nothing but Uh, Tm. Okay, so you can find theta m is equal to J l square plus k divided by k, and then in this equation substitute theta m. What will only remain is theta l. So you can find out theta l by Tm. Okay, I'll do that uh, in the uh, next page, and I'll show you. But one I have found out that is theta l is substituted by theta m into k divided by J l square plus k. In the previous uh, slide, if you see towards the end, it is said that towards the end, uh, previous slide. You have substituted theta l by theta m, and that theta l you are substituting in this equation one in the first equation. There is a main equation, and you are finding everything in terms of theta m, and then taking the theta m outside, and you are finding theta m by t m. So theta m is displacement output side, t m is the input side. Found out theta m by t m. That's all. You could find out theta l by t m also. In that case, in the previous page, you have to represent theta m by Theta L. So theta L is the load side displacement. Theta M is the motor side displacement. Both are output quantities. Both can be taken as the output quantities, and you could find out two transfer functions. So there is a multi-output system. Theta L can be one output. Theta M can be one output. So here I have found out theta M S by T M S. Somebody can ask you theta L S by T M S, and both can be found out. So there is a multi-output system. So only two numericals we have solved. One is the very basic J B K system. It's the same as MBK system. That was the first thing, and second system is the practical uh, transfer function of a motor and driving a load. So these are the two numericals we have done today with the basics of uh, uh, rotational system. So I think that will be enough for today, and I'll be uh, doing all this numerical and I'll, I'll be posting all this uh, contents in uh, your Google group. So please check by tonight and understand. whatever uh, materials are uploaded please understand all these things uh, properly so that we can solve difficult numericals so by this we can three four more lectures i will conduct i myself will conduct and just upload you can find out all those things in the uh, pdf form okay so you do this uh, theory so theory is over now for uh, module 1 for all the numericals now we will be solving many numericals only okay so for that understanding theory is very much important That's all from my side. Thank you. So again, we will meet tomorrow at one five p.m. That's all. So submit your experiment number one write up as soon as possible and complete the MATLAB course as soon as possible. That's all from my side. Please leave. Thank you.